I remember the, the day that uh, I, I was going, I was walking to class. Someone came up and said, hey, did y'all hear they uh, uh, attacked at Pearl Harbor? And uh, well, <laughs> we really didn't know where Pearl Harbor was. We didn't know it was in Hawaii and uh, was probably going to be at war shortly, you know. And it would, all might have to be uh, going in and fighting. But I was at Pearl Harbor December 7th on the USS California. The California was hit with two torpedoes and sunk. It blew me over the side in the oily uh, waters. I joined the WAC in um, 43, the beginning of 43. Then I had a chance to go overseas, so I took it. We worked for him, for General McCarthy, the big boss, yes. When I was in World War II in the Army Air Corps, flying B-24 Liberators, flew out of the 15th Air Force in Italy, was shot down and bailed out and was, went to, into Budapest and was taken prisoner. The night the Liscombe Bay was sunk, we were anchored at an island. She was uh, not very far from us. We was sitting up on deck at night. Somebody hollered, there comes a torpedo. I got up and looked and I haven't seen it yet, but it went right by us and hit the Liscombe Bay and sank it. As you know, the carriers carried around 2,000 men and we picked up 53 survivors. I fought on Iwo Jima in 1945. The 3rd Marine Division went ashore on February 22nd. We couldn't walk on the beach because there was dead Marines just piled up everywhere. Well, I was with the Tuskegee Airmen. I was a crew chief. My job was to, to find out how many planes the Major needed every morning for pilots, for, for the trainees, and then I had to make sure we had that many planes ready. I was in the United States Navy. I was a member of a flight crew, and we flew anti-sub patrols out of the Panama Canal Zone, and uh, Harry Truman had the good sense to drop the atomic bomb, and he ended that war, and we didn't have to invade Japan. I was in the Army, in the 1st Army, in a, that 563rd Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalion. I was, a, as I said, a truck driver and operated the machine, the, the cannon, too. Other than that, I was just a soldier. Anyone said he didn't get scared wasn't there. It was a horrible thing. In the Battle of the Bulls, there were 57,000 casualties, American casualties. Freedom, that's what it's all about. And without it, you have nothing. And it makes me proud that uh, I was able to serve in World War II. And, uh, well, it's great to be an American, I tell you that. These are men and women who fought in this great war and who now are in the latter stages of their lives and they are appreciative, I think, of the fact that they are the greater generation, greatest generation. And because of that, seeing that memorial and what it means not only to them but to the American people gives them a, a new sense of appreciation of all that happened and all of the things that took place during those terrible four years. Over 16 million men and women proudly served in the United States Armed Forces during World War II. Six decades have passed since the war ended. In 2004, a memorial was built in our nation's capital to honor those who served and those who gave their lives. This honor has come too late for many veterans. Their numbers are dwindling. Thousands are lost each day. Most die without ever seeing the beautiful memorial built in their honor. This is the story of a group of World War II veterans, unsung American heroes, who nearly 63 years after the war ended, participated in a special journey.